So if you recall, or for those of you who were not uh, watching the live stream last week, shame on you. No, just kidding. That's fine. Um, <laughs> what we talked about was programmatically verifying PKGs or package files. Now, you might not think that this is the most sexiest of topic, and I will agree with you on that, but it's an important thing to be able to do. So the scenario was at Digita, we distribute our updates as PKG files. And so what happens is our utility, our tool, our product, will download the PKG files. It'll download it from our servers via SSL. So it's all encrypted and secure. But we wanted to add an extra layer of security because again, we are a security company and we wanted to ensure that this package was uh, cryptographically verifiable and signed by us. So if someone in some, you know, found some way to hack our server or manipulate man in the middle of traffic, uh, you know, it's very unlikely. But in that case, we wanted to be able to verify that what we were about to install, our update, was really our update. So we talked about how we reverse engineered PKG Util, which is an Apple utility, and how by reverse engineering that, we figured out the private APIs and methods that Apple used to verify PKGs. And then we just implemented that ourselves. So in the last stream, we walked through how to do that and programmatically showed that. Now, the cool thing is I put together a blog that articulates all of this well. So I'll post the link in the live stream. This is actually my first blog that I've written purely for Digita. So I'm kind of excited about that. So go check that out. And what this does is it breaks down everything we talked about in the live stream, but in a nice blog format. So we talk briefly about how to reverse PKG util, walk through that, uh, how I reverse engineer it, how we found certain methods of interest, how we found this check signature method that had all sorts of interesting methods. And basically then by reading this, how we were able to determine or uncover the private APIs that Apple was using in their utility that we could use ourselves. So definitely check out this blog. It's kind of detailed, but I think gives good insight into how one would perform reverse engineering against a Mac O binary. And yes, this is an Apple utility, but these same reverse engineering techniques will apply if you are analyzing, for example, a piece of malware. And end result was we were able then to write some code, and here's the objective C code for that, where we basically were able to invoke the same private APIs that Apple used and determine whether the PKG file was still validly signed. And then also check the certificate name to make sure that it was signed by us. And then, and only then, once it's validated, we can see this in case uh, signed by Digita, we will then uh, extract the PKG and install this. So that's kind of interesting. As far as I know, there's no other uh, products or code that uh, are doing this or at least discussing this publicly. So kind of, I think, a useful uh, thing to, to do. And the last thing I want to mention about that, sorry, itchy nose, is how to then create a Swift program that programmatically interfaces with this Objective-C code. So everything we write in at Digita is in Swift because Swift is apparently the future. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I quite believe that, but it is an incredible programming language. So this means our core tool, which is written in Swift, has to be able to validate or verify these PKG files using this Objective-C code. So we're gonna hop over to Xcode. Hopefully you can see this. Yeah, it looks pretty good on the screen. Make it a touch bigger. And what we're going to do is in this main.swift file, we are going to bridge into our Objective-C code so that from the Swift code, we can call directly into the Objective-C code that we wrote that validates or verifies the PKG. And luckily when Apple was designing Swift, they realized that this was a likely scenario that Objective-C code uh, should be able to be integrated with Swift. So they made this pretty easy. There are some nuances, but we'll briefly walk through and show if you have, for example, Objective-C code, how you can bridge it and then utilize it in your Swift project. So this is the entirety of the Swift code. And we can basically see what we're doing is we're calling or first instantiating a verify PKG object. And then we're calling the verify method on that, passing the path of the PKG file to verify. And then also the name of the certificate we want to validate. So we're basically saying, hey, and I've hard coded these paths, for example, we want to make sure that this update.pkg file is Ver verified, cryptographically signed by Digita's 
Apple developer ID. So again, Swift code, pretty simple. Now let's look at how we implement that. So we're gonna hop over to the verifypkg.m file. This code should look familiar. This is the code that's in the blog. And then it's also what we wrote uh, last week in the live stream. And again, this is just the code to programmatically verify a PKG file. I originally tried porting this to Swift, but I got frustrated and I actually talked to some uh, people who, who, who write Swift way better than me. And they basically said, look, since you're doing a bunch of things with private frameworks and private classes and private methods, Swift really isn't that good at dealing with all that. So it's far easier just to keep your Objective-C code and bridge it, bring it into your Swift project. So that's exactly what I did here. So verify pkg.hnm, this is just the Objective-C code. And the glue that binds everything together is this bridge.h file. And all we have in this bridge.h file is the verify pkg.h, the header file, and then this package kit.h file, which is another header file that just has all the private classes and methods that I dumped via class dump. Uh, we discussed this in the last live stream, which you can also catch on YouTube. So in this bridge.h just has these two import directives, and this is what makes the Swift code able to access that. And the question might be, okay, how does this Swift code now, how is it able, for example, to call this verify, verify, verify.pkg function, which if we jump to the definition, it magically knows that it's in this verify.pkg in my Objective-C file. And the answer is something called the Swift bridging header. So I'm in Xcode. I can't make this bigger, but what I'm looking for is bridge. And right here in our project, we can see that there is an entry in the program settings that's called Objective-C bridging header. And all we do is we come and we put the value for this to that bridge.h file that we created. So you see we have the project name, just makes it a relative path, and then bridge.h. Going back to bridge.h, we can see it has the Objective-C header files. So if you specify that in the program settings in your Xcode project, in your Swift Xcode project, when you compile that, all your Objective-C code now is available to the Swift code. So in our Swift code, we can, for example, reference Objective-C classes like the verify, verify, verify PKG class that we wrote. Again, this is an Objective-C class. So I'm gonna compile this and we're gonna run this and we're gonna see that, that yes, this magically works. So I hit command R, which builds and compiles this. I set a breakpoint on this so that we can step into this and actually show that we are executing from Swift code into Objective-C code. So I hit function F7, which steps into the class. And we can now see that we are in my Objective-C code, specifically the verify function that we've just invoked from the Swift code. I'm gonna type finish over here. Let me just pull this up a little higher so you can see that. This is just going to tell the debugger to execute to the end of this function and return, because this is code that we've discussed previously. This function, the verify function, is going to return a Boolean, true or false. True means the PKG is verified and signed and uh, validly by the certificate we passed in. False means that some error occurred. And we might not know exactly what error in this scenario. We don't actually care. It could be that the uh, PKG is not signed. Uh, it's been uh, corrupted in transfer. Uh, it is signed, but by another certificate. Uh, the certificate has been revoked. You know, really a host of problems. I don't really care about that. I really just want to be able to confidently answer the fact that, yes, it's signed. And yes, it is signed by Digita's certificate. So we step, continue stepping, and we can see that this function returned true, which means the code within this if block will execute. Because again, it returned true. So when we execute that, we can see it prints out verified. PKG is signed by Digita LLC. And just to prove I am not making this up, if we change, for example, this to malware.pkg. I'm going to rebuild and rerun this. This should, in theory, 
come back with an error and execute the logic in the else statement, which it does. Phew. <laughs> Printing out error. The package is either not signed, or you know, there was some error, or it was not signed by Digita Security. So cool. It's kind of a wrap, but this illustrates how we can programmatically verify PKG files and do so directly from Swift code. So thanks again to Apple for providing a pretty easy mechanism that allows you to bridge Objective-C and Swift code. Normally, if you're writing a Swift project, I would recommend keeping it purely Swift. But if you're doing kind of funky things like using private classes, private methods, or doing some kind of low level stuff, for example, if you're writing uh, offensive cyber capabilities, malware or productizing an exploit per se, Swift is probably not the best programming language for that because it abstracts a lot of details away. So Objective-C in that scenario is probably a better choice. But if there is some constraint, for example, the main tool is written in Swift and you need to bridge code between those two, you can do that very easily, again, via the bridging file which you specify in the Swift project.